That's a perfect breakfast potato. Potato, potato, call it what you want. You can't call this bad. Oh my. Welcome back, Golden Family. Today we're making my favorite breakfast item all time, breakfast potatoes. This is one of those recipes you make on the weekend when you have a little time on your hands to actually prep all the beautiful ingredients. And it's just one of my favorite ways to make potatoes. Use whatever potato you have on hand. I have some russet potatoes. Another time when I like making this dish is when the potato starts getting pregnant like this. It's the perfect time to use these potatoes. And before we do anything, we're just gonna peel them off. Right when the potatoes are done, you wanna toss them into some ice cold water. This just helps them from turning black and oxidizing. And you just feel like it just keeps them alive. I still remember even as a child, whenever I would hear the word potato, my ears would perk up. And ever since then, it's always been my favorite thing to eat in any form. Now I'm gonna pair the potatoes with some white onion. The size of the onion pieces are gonna be about half the size of the potato. I like everything bite sized so I'm gonna go for like a smaller one inch centimeter cube, I guess. Just like this. This is another great opportunity to add any leftover vegetables that you like. You can just easily toss them in, but make sure that you like the vegetables so it's not ruining the flavor of the potato. I have an extra shallot, so I'm just gonna chop it up. I wouldn't necessarily consider the shallot to be a viral piece of the recipe. And probably the most important and best thing to pair with the potato is some garlic. There's fresh peeled garlic. I'm gonna slice them in half. And these are gonna cook through, so it's fine if they're a little bit larger in size. You don't want them too big, obviously. Oh my God. Damn, onion got me crying. Garlic, onion, and shallot just ruin your day, huh? You better make this for someone you love because it's painful. Now the potatoes are perfect so far, but to elevate them, we're gonna add a serrano. In my opinion, heat is very important in this recipe. You can easily use a jalapeno or any vegetable that you prefer. Take our beautiful serrano pepper, nice, thin strips. And then we're gonna chop them up extremely fine just so they could run through the whole recipe. The produce here in Miami is a lot better than Michigan. And the other day I got like a local jalapeno and they're so much more spicy like than the typical jalapenos that I'm used to. And I'm not bad, I could handle spice. Like a jalapeno is not spicy, but the ones here have a kick. Since I like to prep everything all at once, I have some fresh cilantro. I wouldn't consider this just a garnish. Like I wanna add a decent amount to add to the potatoes because it adds so much lovely flavor. If you do not like cilantro, you could easily use parsley. And don't you think we forgot the highlight of the show, our potatoes. They've been soaking in the water. It's not necessary to soak them in the water, but as you prep and wait, you don't want them to just sit out. So you want nice and small diced cubes because we're not gonna be boiling the potatoes then adding them to the pan. I want the potatoes to be at the perfect size where they're gonna fully cook and get crispy on the outside and still be nice and tender on the inside. I only like pre-boiling the potato if I'm gonna keep them you know, bigger. So I'm gonna show you the size that we're going for, just small little cubes, just like this. In order for the potato not to stick to the knife, point your knife down, you could gotta go in a slicing motion, that way it doesn't get stuck anywhere. And then we get nice, easy, thin cuts on the potato. Potato looks like me and my siblings, the odd one out. Now you do the drying process right before you wanna cook them. The potatoes still have residual moisture that we do not want when we cook the potatoes. So I'm gonna take a paper towel, drop all my potatoes and kinda of spread them out just like this. And then I'm just gonna pat them dry with another paper towel and beautiful. If for some reason you're prepping this early, you could easily put the potatoes back into the cold water and when you wanna cook them, pat them dry. Today's cookware, we're using cast iron once again. Potatoes take the longest to cook, so we're gonna toss them into the pan first. We are actually not gonna be adding oil to the pan. We have strips of beef bacon. For those of you who do not know I'm Muslim, I cannot eat pork, therefore we eat beef bacon or turkey. This is made out of a cow. Hence why they put the word beef before it. Now, if you're confused on why I'm emphasizing so much, just whenever I use it, read the comments. Comments from other recipes that have beef bacon. Bro, bacon? Are you for real? Wait, so beef bacon is from pigs, right? Bro, why are you eating pork? It's haram. Beef bacon. We're gonna toss it into the cast iron pan just like this and the pan is still cold. Therefore, when we turn up the heat, all that fat is gonna start rendering. It's gonna melt down in that pan without burning the bacon. So you can already see it kind of getting glossy right here. Now that our beef bacon is laid out, I'm gonna turn on the heat to a medium and just let it render. Can you use turkey bacon? Sure, but it's not gonna render as much fat, so you're gonna have to add oil or butter. The beef bacon is nice and rendering. It's starting to curl up a little bit and all that fat is being rendered. The beef bacon already used back way too much. You wanna lower the heat just a little bit. Just because you don't want to burn that fat because we need that fat to cook the potatoes and to flavor the rest of the recipe. When it starts to look like this, it's almost there. You want to see no remaining fat and it's nice and crispy on both sides. Plate with paper towel. I'm just going to toss on the ready pieces and let them chill out. We're going to be adding these back at the end. See all that leftover fat? That's beautiful. So not halal mode. Gonna toss in our potatoes. The heat is set at a medium, not too high. You're going to burn the potatoes, you're going to burn everything. If you have an electric burner, medium high. Oh, wow. Beautiful, nice sizzle. Let them capture all that beef fat. My favorite seasoning recently has been some chipotle chili powder. I don't know why, it's just so smoky and amazing. 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of chipotle chili powder. Smoked paprika, if you think it does not have flavor, I disagree. Salt is very important with potatoes. We're gonna add a nice hefty amount of salt. And then last but not least, some chili flakes. Just a couple. Okay, these already look fantastic. I'm telling you, you have to make this for people that you love. I'm not spending all this time for somebody I don't really like. You got that annoying cousin coming over, don't make these. But my cousins, I love them all. You see how they're nice and glossy? That they just absorbed all that beautiful fat. Oh my God. After about three, four minutes, it's time to toss in the onion, shallot, and serrano pepper. Garlic, not yet. We don't want it to burn. Lovely. And just, yeah, let this roll for like five, at least five, 10 minutes. I actually like to add a little Worcestershire sauce just to, you know, deglaze. Just a tiny little bit. And it adds like a nice little subtle smokiness to the uh, potatoes. And then I'm gonna scrape, 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 scrape. Let them sit and crustify a little bit. And every couple of minutes you wanna turn them. You don't wanna constantly turn them, but you also don't wanna sleep on them. You can always grab one, try it. There's still a nice little bite to it. Use a couple of minutes. Now I'd say these potatoes are at least 70% done. I'm gonna add the garlic. Nice generous amount of garlic. And no parts of this that I say this was healthy. So we're gonna add nice small cubes of butter, just two tablespoons. The butter's just gonna melt and hydrate that potato. It's gonna make it that much better. Now, while this is finishing cooking, chop up your beef bacon into bits. If you're gonna put this much love into potatoes, we can eat a little couple extra calories. Now, I don't like to completely disintegrate the beef bacon. I like to keep a little texture. So I don't crush them up and mash them up that much, but I also don't want huge chunks. Doesn't this look gorgeous? One easy, simple fix when something is bland. Don't add more paprika and chipotle powder if it's already there. Nick the Giovanni's favorite seasoning, salt. Add a little bit of salt, it'll bring up all that beautiful flavor. Now, can you put cheese on this? Sure. Can you put sour cream on this? Sure. You can easily crack an egg over this, but for me, we put so much love and passion into these potatoes. I just want to eat the potatoes. And come on, they look amazing. If you're serving this to a group, I really recommend just serving in the cast iron skillet. It looks like rustic and beautiful. All right. I killed the heat. I don't know why Arabs love eating lemon with potatoes, but uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon on this. Very optional, but just a little lemon, you know, the acidity cuts through all that fat. It just brings out all that beautiful flavor. I have like 16 seeds in there now. Nice. And to finish off this beautiful creation of potatoes, we're gonna go in with the fresh cilantro, just like this. And one more last of my favorite toppings, some chives, or you can easily add green onion, just cut them nice and thin. And there you have it, folks. Honestly, that's a final product right there. I purposely did not fill up the whole pan with a bunch of potatoes. I even have a little bit left. I didn't want the pan to get too crowded and then you know, everything will turn nice and mushy, so I did not want that. So make sure you're not doing that too. Again, great grill top or like flat top recipe. This is fantastic. These potatoes are literally amazing. When you have leftovers, which you should it, but if you have leftovers, you could crack uh, or you could whisk up an egg, toss some on, it's an omelet the next day. Fantastic. Um, let's give it a try. And as always, now bismillah. That's a potato. Potato, potato, call it what you want. You can't call it bad. Oh my. Y'all lucky Abe ain't here. Man went to the Florida Keys after he got a haircut. Doesn't know how to act again. That's a perfect breakfast potato. And there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for another beautiful recipe. Thank you so much for all your support. Um, I'm just slightly tired, so be patient with me. Um, but you know, making the food and you know, connecting with y'all just always gives me energy. Y'all are the best humans. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, thank you so much.